it's just the rad adventure. It's an adventure across mountains, forests and glaciers on foot and by flight. Its fans know it as the original and the greatest hike and fly battle on the planet. It is the Red Bull X Alps. This year, the 10th edition, there is a radical new route, the longest ever. Oh no. 29 athletes must hike, climb, run, and struggle their way to Mont Blanc and back in conditions that at times are desperate. To call it the world's toughest adventure race doesn't come close. Salzburg, Austria is once again the start, and not everyone is in the condition of their lives. A hard landing in pre-week means some ankle discomfort for Kiwi contender Nick Nienens. Many are feeling anxious. So I'm, I'm quite a bit nervous, but uh, I, I think it's more like I'm excited about it and I'm really looking forward that the, that the race starts. So. So we stop asking and wondering what, what's going to go well and what's not, so... Six-time champion Krieg Mara looks relaxed as he shares a joke with French rookie Damien Lacaz. But his preparation means leaving nothing to chance. It's the halt of things that when you do intensive for a race, it's like a ski skier who the slalom stange is prägt. We have tried in the last two days uns das Rennen noch besser vorzustellen. Und es ist ja nicht nur gerade drei Minuten, sondern eben zwei Wochen, wo wir jetzt da unterwegs sind. Und äh, ja, das hat jetzt auch noch ein bisschen besseres Gefühl gegeben. There are no shortage of challenges this year. Among them is Austria's Paul Guschelbauer. But having only just recovered from a broken leg, he's happy to take each day as it comes. Auf dem Geisberg komme ich auf jeden Fall drauf. Und dann hoffen wir, dass wir gute Flugbedingungen sehen. Für mich selbst wird auf jeden Fall eine Zeit kommen, wo man viel laufen muss. Aber dann muss ich weiter schauen, wie es dann läuft. Aber ich bin auf jeden Fall sehr optimistisch, dass es ein cooles Rennen wird. But before the main race, athletes take part in the Prologue. Seven! It's a one-day race around the mountains of Wagrein Kleiner. Two! One! Oh! French athlete Maxime Pino leads from the front, followed by Kriegel Mara. Yes. So far, so good for Paul Guschelbauer, looking as strong as ever. Pino is first at the turn point, followed by Austrian rookie Thomas Friedrich. I'm sorry. He's quick to get in the air, as is Italy's Aaron Duragatti. Then it's Maurer's turn. He knows that every second counts. The rest of the field are quick to follow. In the air, Pino and Mara fly wingtip to wingtip in a duel to the finish. Not far behind is the Austrian Thomas Friedrich. At 20, he may be the youngest athlete, but he's determined to make his mark. The chasing athletes are not far behind. Kriegel Mara is first to cross the line, while Maxime Pino comes in second. Yeah. 
But it's Thomas Friedrich who steals the show with a dramatic landing into third place. Ich bin mega motiviert, aber das war ich vorher schon. Und äh, freue mich jetzt echt auf Sonntag. Jetzt noch ein bisschen erholen, regenerieren und dann am Sonntag geht's los. At the end of the day, the leaderboard has Mara, Pino and Friedrich on the podium. They each gain an additional night pass, while Benoit Uter and Patrick von Kennel are fourth and fifth. Back to Salzburg for the start of the main race. The 12 day adventure race finally begins with a race to the top of the Geisberg. There's a heat wave on and it's brutally hot. Gute Chance, dass wir mit Mädlich gehen und erst da oben ist, oder? Das wird steil. Das Daumen ist okay. Der geht locker. Ich bin zu hart. Thomas Friedrich is first to the turn point. He's followed by Maxim Pino, Kriegel Mara, and Simon Oberauner. With the wind gusting over 30 kilometers an hour, it's questionable whether race director Christoph Weber will allow athletes to launch. But he gives the all clear. It's a little bit between you today, but uh, I hope for a good flight to Vagra. Mara launches with a wave to the crowds. Soon everyone is in the air, soaring in the strong winds. At first, everyone stays close to the mountain to take advantage of the lift. Eventually, they make a break. Some stay airborne. Others, like Thomas Friedrich, bomb out and are forced to continue on foot. Nach dem Start äh, eigentlich immer ganz gut dabei gewesen beim Kurbeln und habe dann leider ein bisschen Pech gehabt und habe die erste Damage, die höher raufgegangen ist, ein bisschen schlecht erwischt. Ein bisschen, ein bisschen tief auf die Hangseite reingeflogen. Und dort ist es ein bisschen schlecht gegangen. Und ja, da sind wir jetzt ein bisschen, ein bisschen weniger weit wie die anderen. Aber ja, ich sage, es ist der erste Tag. Passiert einmal. First to arrive at Wagrain Kleinau is French athlete Maxime Pinot. It was good to be here because it was tricky conditions, so I'm happy to be here and yeah, now it's time to go. <laughs> Another flight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Germany's Marcus Anders is next to arrive. As Pino hikes to the next launch, the chasers come thick and fast. Patrick von Kernel, Benoit Uter, and Paul Guschelbauer. Bravo, Benoit.
Tobias Gross Rubacher is next. Then finally Maurer, who realizes he has some catching up to do. Thank you. Thank you. As dusk approaches, Pino launches. Guschelbauer also manages to get into the air. What will this year's Red Bull X Alps bring for the veteran athlete? Anything can and usually does happen in this race. But for now, it's a good flight towards turn point three and he lands just before the evening cutoff. It's been a long day for all athletes. Time to let the supporters take over, kick off the shoes, and try to recharge those batteries. Early starts. They are never easy. Athletes are on the move at 5 a.m which usually means a 4.30 a.m. wake up. After a disappointing oh. first day, Friedrich finally arrives at turn point two. Maxime Pino searches for some thermals. Thomas Friedrich sets his sights on Zell am See. For Pino, the flying ends prematurely, and with it, his lead. Paul Guschelbar, meanwhile, soaks up the atmosphere as he contemplates his next move. I'm confident that it's bald thermic. It's now half past ten. But the Ben Wattler is not yet good. That's why I'm now a little worried because, according to prognosis, it should rise. Und wir müssen Thermik haben, weil sonst ist es noch ein weiter hügeliger Weg bis Hankam. Und auch dort möchte ich natürlich oben bei der Station einlanden und nicht noch mal hochgehen. Mara launches from Schmittenhöhe. The airspace is tricky, the thermals are not so strong, but he's able to get away. He'll be back here again in a week. But first, there are some turn points that need signing. Three months ago, Paul Guschelbauer broke his leg in a skiing accident. But so far in this race, everything is going okay. A quick stash of his wing then he's off to the next launch. Conditions are perfect. He takes off and is soon climbing in a strong thermal, gaining enough altitude to cover the 50 kilometers to Kitzbühel Hanenkamp in the air. He charges through the rankings and is the first to arrive at the third turn point. It's a great start for the Austrian athlete. <laughs> Next to land at the start of the famous ski run is Germany's Marcus Anders.
Next up, Kingal Akantal. 50 kilometers to the north. Alles gut mit Paul Muschelbauer. Und hinter ihm dann auch gleich Markus Anders. Die werden jetzt hier gemeinsame Sache machen. Chaotic scenes at the turn point as Mara dodges Simon Oberana and manages to fly his wing almost all the way to the signboard. Oberana is next with the formalities, followed by Aaron Durigati. Bravo, Aaron! Jetzt geht's los, Benoit Uter! Gross Rabatscher, Patrick von Kernel and Benoit Uter are not far behind. Everyone is keen to get straight back in the air. There's not a moment to lose. The next turn point is Chiemgau Achental, at the very northern edge of the German Alps. the delight of local supporters, the German athlete Marcus Anders is first to arrive. <laughs> then in quick succession, Oberauna, Maura, Guschelbauer all sign the board. All athletes are finding it tough going in the hot weather. Uh, it's really hard to end the lead. It's so hot. I'm waiting for cold weather. Fatigue for the. The top five athletes are soon pleased to be in the air again, anxious to get back into the mountains and away from the furnace in the flatlands. For the moment, they are content to work together as a gaggle. But that will soon change as the afternoon wears on when Maura chooses an inspired line to get ahead. Thomas Friedrich makes it to turn point three. He may not be as close to the front as he'd like, but there's still a long way to go. Mara, meanwhile, finishes the day in an upbeat mood, but it's not working for everyone. It is uh, seven minutes to three. Oh, but okay. Yesterday was bad, today was terrible. Uh, it was pretty, but six flights, thousands and thousands of meters of ascent i don't i lost track actually the last time i checked on my watch i was like 7500 calories um and just like yesterday nothing worked yeah it's been a frustrating day so i probably needed to get a little bit higher before i launched but the last time i launched pretty high and it didn't work either so it, it, we're, we've been out of sync the whole time every time you know uh, i fly and then it gets dark you know clouded out and and so it's just, it just hasn't really been the right sink for us. Not yesterday and not today. So we've got a lot of work to do. We're, we're, we've fallen way behind the guys I was with yesterday. And um, we're, we're going to be fighting to not get eliminated now. Day three of the Red Bull X Alps and race director Christoph Weber has a tough job keeping up with everything that's going on including the race leader, Kriegel Maurer. The others are getting much stronger. Kriegel is even stronger than the years before. And you could see it on day two. Uh, he was in the middle of the pack or even behind of the um, uh, pack in the front. And in the end of the day, he's more than 20 kilometers ahead. Leading from the front, is where Mara likes to be. 
sind hier auf 1700 Meter im Meer. Das Spannende ist jetzt, den Startpunkt zu definieren. Wir sehen, dass es oben eine erste Basis hat, die ist sehr hoch, die wäre super. Wir sind aber hier mehr in den Voralpen, in den Hügeln. Wir sehen, ganz unten hat noch Nebel, so in einer Inversionsschicht. Die interessiert mich aber nicht. Und spannend ist jetzt dazwischen, gibt es in unserer Region auch eine Basis. Es kumuliert etwas, das ist eigentlich ein gutes Zeichen. Es ist jetzt halb neun und ich bin eigentlich zuversichtlich, dass ich da bald starten kann und Richtung Lermoos weiterfliegen kann. For every athlete, the trick is knowing when to launch. Playing the waiting game is a familiar routine. Mara takes his chances and launches. It's in the air where he's most comfortable and most effective. Benoit Uter is having a great race as he flies towards turn point five. To get there, he must pass the Zugspitze, Germany's highest mountain. It's extremely windy at the turn point, making for challenging conditions. For the first time this race, Maurer is the first at the signboard. <laughs> So, Danke für den Besuch. Patrick von Kernel is hot in pursuit. But if anything, the wind is picking up, making landing a hazardous business. Next to arrive is Benoit Uter. He's followed by Aaron Duragati and then Paul Gusselbauer. With a forecast of strong winds and thunderstorms, the decision is where to go next. Boncano, Mara and Uter all decide to chance their luck, launching in terrifyingly turbulent conditions off the Grubigstein. It's a risky move, but it pays off. Meanwhile, Thomas Friedrich reaches turn point four, Chiemgau Achental. The female athlete Yael Margalic shows that in these turbulent conditions, not every launch goes to plan. At the back of the field, Gavin McClurg is suffering and fighting to avoid elimination. But he still manages to find time for a laugh with his team. <laughs> it's like that time, remember when we were going to Garda in 2017? When you had the, when you edited your phone, you said, okay, so your options are, you can walk 126K <laughs> in the valley with 900 meters up and 1500 down, or that's it. <laughs> Have fun with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Benoit Uter is one of the race's strongest runners, but not every obstacle can be overcome on the ground. So, yes, I have a problem with my glider this morning. Uh, I, when I took off, a tree broke my glider and uh, I have to repair it. I can fly all the day with my, my glider broken. <laughs> In the mountains, pilots are taught to launch in wide open spaces with as few obstacles as possible. But in the Red Bull X Alps, as Marcus Anders demonstrates, sometimes you've got to take what you can find. Oh. 
So far, everything is going well for the German athlete. Ja, es zeigt er ist doch sowieso viel geiler. Ähm, ja, wir haben es eigentlich ganz gut verwischt. Wir waren doch gut unterwegs, viel geflogen, gar nicht so viel gelaufen. Ein paar Höhenmeter sind schon immer zusammengekommen, aber macht Spaß, hatte schöne Flüge soweit und so kann es eigentlich weitergehen. In the morning he hikes up and takes off once again, okay. leaving his supporter to sort out the gear. Day four and the race leader Kriegel Mara is above the Alberg Pass near the Swiss border where he spent the night with fellow countryman Patrick von Kernel. He is hiking up, hoping the clouds will part so he can launch into Switzerland. It's a gruelling ascent up the mountain and across the snow and when he finally gets to the top, he doesn't like what he sees at all. Oh no! Shit! Meanwhile, Belgium's Tom de Dorlado is able to enjoy the view on the approach to Lermus in the Tiroler Zugspitz Arena. <laughs> the race's two female athletes, Yael Margalic and Laurie Genovese, are also happy to tag the turn point. Margalic uses the time to eat and roll out some tension. At launch above the Alberg, the cloud clears for two waiting athletes, Kriegel Maurer and Patrick von Kernel. Um, let's here starten. Und da an der Sonnenseite nach hinten. Da hinten im, im Schneefeld wieder landen und dann noch höher hoch, um dann rauszufliegen. Their goal is to cross into Switzerland and tag the turn point of Santis. There's no signboard, they just have to get within two kilometers of a virtual cylinder around the mountain. It's a straight line distance of 60 kilometers across complicated terrain and through challenging conditions. For both athletes, it's all about trying to stay airborne for as long as possible. And if they must land, they try to land high. Now the field is spread out across 200 kilometers of the Alps, and it's not just fans who watch live tracking. Uh, actually, at the moment, we are chasing the field group, so we are 10k behind them now, maybe 15 behind Trigo. So that's a good position also to, to come back stronger because you see what they are doing and you can adjust if, if you need. It's dawn on day five, and Team Switzerland are focused on making good decisions. After a good breakfast, of course. And what's sicher speziell is, we're going to the south and have on the good schon 50 stunden kilometer Südwind. That means so fast more wind, wie the Gletscher, wie the Kegel can fliegen. 
und es ist immer traurig, viel Höhenmeter zu investieren und nachher eigentlich wirklich den Wind in die Schnauze zu bekommen. Und darum probieren wir tief zu bleiben und möglichst eine smarte Linie zu finden. Weil das Ziel wäre schon, heute nach vier zu kommen. Oder es wäre ein Traum und aus diesem Traum probieren wir jetzt einen Plan zu machen. Jarl Margalic is competing in the Red Bull X Alps for the first time. One of only two women taking part. You ask yourself, can I do it? And you, if you don't try, you don't know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's time to launch, but the wind suddenly picks up. Maurer is forced to do everything in his powers to wrestle the wing under control in the turbulence. But he's the master at this and manages to stay on his feet, bring the wing overhead and get away. The next stop is the turnpoint of Fisch, and Maurer is followed every step of the way on live tracking. The Swiss resort of Fisch is situated on the sunny side of the Rhone Valley, and in summer is a hiking and paragliding paradise. It sits at the base of the Aletsch Glacier, the longest in Europe. Like every athlete in this race, Paul Guschelbauer has had his share of ups and downs. Some decisions work out, others do not. The trick is to hold your head high and keep going, even when luck is against you. For the moment, he must continue on foot in the rain. Maurer arrives at Fisch, but it's clear the race is taking its toll. <laughs> Next in is Patrick von Kernel. Then in the morning, a bleary-eyed Benoit Uter <laughs> arrives. Hi Benoit. Hey. How is your feeling? Uh, I feel good after a good night. But uh, yesterday it's a hard day, very hard day. So I hope for fly a little bit today because uh, I don't want to work so much. <laughs> and uh, yes, I hope for a good try. <laughs> Not far behind are Aaron Duragati and Maxime Pino, who arrive within seconds of each other. This man is Toma Kokonya. He's 46 and has taken part in every edition of the race since 2003. Among race fans, he is a legend. Mara launches. Uter follows. The region is famous for its flying, and they are hoping to make big distances in the air. And they're not the only ones. Aaron Duragati in fifth place is looking hopeful. Paul Guschelbauer approaches turn point seven in seventh place. The mighty Aletsch Glacier provides a spectacular backdrop as he nears his target. He's still within touching distance of the race leaders, but there's still a long way to go. Britain's Steve Bramfit is competing for the first time. But they are fans by the looks of it. Yeah. It's just a rad adventure, you know, and I think us as athletes, it's quite funny being called an athlete, but we're kind of like pampered a little bit because 
wherever we land people come they give us food they give us drinks um, we've just got a hike fly eat shit sleep repeat sort of thing <laughs> mountain guide Jürgen Vietschuk is the safety director of the Red Bull X Alps and it's his job to look out for athletes the Red Bull X Alps athletes don't only have to um, hike and fly but they have to do this under the uh, competition circumstances. And this means that, the, that they are always under pressure. The, the most important thing for them is to be fast. The prospect of injury is a real threat. After a promising start, it's all over for Thomas Friedrich, who's injured his ankle after a bad landing. So schnell geht's. Und dann ist es vorbei. For the rest of the field, there is no let up in the relentless pace. It's go, 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 all the way. <laughs> For one athlete, the dogged determination has paid off. After falling out of the top ten, Maxime Pinot has fought his way back to the front. Yeah, I'm still feeling fit, but yesterday I walked like 60, 65k and 4,000 meters and was difficult this morning. But in the happy, I feel really, really good and I have no pain, nothing, but just sometimes to be difficult and just the energy is not the same during all the day. So you have to manage this. With Pino alongside, the pressure just intensified for Mara. The question is whether he can stick to his game plan with the Frenchman on his heels. At the end of day six, the leaders may have passed the halfway point, but there's still another 600 kilometers to go. It's a long, long way, with conditions far from favorable. Mexican athlete Eduardo Gaza is competing in the race for the second time. The challenge for me is coming to a mountain range that I don't know really much about and discovering uh, how to how to tag their points, how to how to do things really on my own, and that gives me a sense of satisfaction. Either way, if you succeed, it's great you figure it out, but if you fail uh, and you make a mistake, you get that that learning from it. So you also feel at the end, you know, grateful that you had the opportunity to, uh, to go through that challenge. It's really about the mountains and uh, the personal uh, trip that you take uh, both physically and, and mentally to get through this uh, race. At the top of the Dent d'Oche, as they wait for the right conditions, Pino and Mara discuss the next leg to Mont Blanc. Athletes may be competitors, but they are also brothers in arms, sharing the experience, the risks, the pain, and the good times. Mara launches, then Pino. Like every flight, better to fly than. Further back, Uter also takes to the air. The formidable Mont Blanc Massif presents the biggest challenge for athletes. It's also a huge psychological barrier, as once over, they can start the return journey back to Austria. They have to cross from the north to the south over a high mountain pass. Which one is up to them? 
All day, Maura and Pino have been flying wingtip to wingtip across France's Haute Savoie region. It's been a gripping duel, and at times, it looks as though Pino has the advantage. Mid afternoon, they cross over the Col de la Seine into Italy. They both then turn northeast and head back into Switzerland, finishing up near the Fiche turn point. At this stage, the race is anyone's. I was a bit tired, but uh, this morning I feel still, uh, still in shape and it's day eight, so that's good news. <laughs> Pino starts the day in positive spirits, convinced he has ruffled the eagle's feathers as he begins the hike up the Simplon Pass to Italy. Further back, Gavin McClurg explains his motivation. I love the course this year. I never liked Monaco. Uh, it's hot, it's dangerous down there. It's, there's nowhere to land. Um, I'm fortunate because I got there in 2015, so I got to kind of, you know, it is cool to go to the sea, but I'm actually way more excited about this course. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to get on it to get this one done for sure. It's a long ways. Unlike Pinot, Maurer chooses to stay north in familiar territory in Switzerland. Yeah, it's hot. We're here in Fies. It's um, 20 to 80. And the goal is, of course, to get to the end of the pit. But what's not clear is the weather. As you can see, it's in the south. It's a southwind. It's in the south. It's in the south. But when it's like so, it's a bit of a question how good the thermometer is. And it's not clear how good the thermometer is. And it's not clear how good the thermometer is. Mara launches above Fisch. His route is longer, but he gambles everything on it working out. Ich hatte den Plan im Kopf nach Süden, aber das Gefühl sagte, nein, Norden ist besser. Der Maxim fliegt nach Norden. Der Ben war kommt von hinten. Das war dann sehr, sehr stressig. Unable to fly in Italy, Pino realizes he's made a terrible mistake. I'm looking to to the live tracking triggers in the air since maybe one hour. He's at 3,000 and you can't do anything about it. Just 3,000 meters mountains between you and the valley. You can't go. You can't go north for sure. You just have to keep going in this option. It's the only way. And uh, and you know maybe. At midday, it would be over for the victory, for sure. Not to be forgotten is Benoit Uter, who is proving just as strong in the air as he is on the ground. He manages to get some distance, which is more than can be said for those near Mont Blanc. Looking at this, I was still optimistic. It's blue over there, but I need to go this way. Maurer's bold move across Switzerland pays off, and he covers an incredible 300 kilometers, giving him an unassailable lead. Next stop, Kronplatz, Italy, where the Saliva Trophy for sportsmanship is on display. In the morning, Maurer launches from the top of Mutzpitzer, which translates as Courage Peak. Given his performance in perilous conditions the previous day, it seems a fitting place to fly from, and he makes good progress to Kronplatz. The crowd has gathered to welcome this Swiss maestro, and he arrives at 1.30 p.m. After signing the board, he's off again. All that's left is to cross the main chain of the Alps. Three and a half hours later, he arrives at Schmittenhör. His victory is sealed. All that remains is the final glide to the official finish in Zell Amsi.
Mara makes the most out of the flight, showing off some acro moves. The crowds below. Then it's to the landing float, where his supporter, Thomas Turilla, is waiting. That's where the clock stops, and where the celebrations can begin. Once again, it's been an incredible performance from the Swiss athlete as he secures his seventh victory in a row. When you see that he seven days, it's the same stand. It's about um, a few hours, even minutes. Und plötzlich kann man aber gleich gewinnen und, und nachher gleich das bringen, was äh, wo erwartet wird. Das ist äh, ein sehr schönes Gefühl und, und darum bin ich auch dementsprechend happy, gewesen, dass ich da bin gelandet bin. Nicht zuletzt bin ich happy, gewesen, bin ich auf dem Floß gelandet und nicht im Wasser. Half an hour after Mara's arrival, Simon Oberaner makes it to Kronplatz. He is followed nine minutes later by Maxime Pinot. The race is on for second and third place. <laughs> Patrick von Kernel signs the board at dawn the following morning. He's not far behind and he's in the air. Benoit Uter arrives that afternoon in fifth place, but his attempts to get airborne show the kind of rough conditions athletes have to deal with. Maxime Pinot now has to fight for a place on the podium, but it may be too late. A battle is on between Simon Oberauner and Patrick von Kernel as they make the final glide across the Pinsgau Valley to Schmittenhör. It's a full on race. Von Kernel is just ahead, but Oberauner is right behind as they come in to land. Von Kernel can't afford to lose any time. He bunches up his wing and races on foot. He makes it to the signboard. Second place is in the bag. In the air, the realization sinks in. Es war so ein knapper Endanflug zusammen mit Maxim und Simon zusammen. Und da ist man so unter Strom, es ist mega schwierig, das alles jetzt in Wort zu fassen. Danke. Ganz ehrlich, mir ist, mir ist durch den Kopf gegangen, einfach wie schön die Zeit jetzt mit meinem Team da war, wie genial die hinter mir gestanden sind, wie gut das alles funktioniert hat. Wir haben eine so eine eingespielte Sache, das hat alles reibungslos funktioniert und jedem hat es taugt. Es war intensiv und anstrengend, aber jedem hat es taugt. Und so eine Zeit ist unbezahlbar und das ist sehr wunderschön, wenn man da runterkommt dann. Ja. After once challenging Mara for the lead, Maxime Pinot arrives in disappointing fourth place. It's been an extraordinary race for the Frenchman. And for his Come compatriot, Benoit Uter. Yesterday it's a long day for me because uh, the weather conditions are a little bit windy for me. I can fly a little bit the morning, but after it's very strong, strong and uh, I just can took off after the Kronplatz turn point and go to the valley. And after uh, I know I have uh, only one solution to reach uh, the LMC and the finish line. It's to walk uh, in a valley, uh, across a big pass at uh, 2,700 meters. So I pull my night pass. I can cross the pass with uh, my supporter, Tom Remy, this night. And uh, everything is uh, going well. And uh, now we are near the LMC. And uh, I'm happy because uh, I know I can finish the race today. Yeah. Uter is ecstatic to be in the air. In the past 40 hours, he's hiked 170 kilometers. Making the finish means the world to him. 
Paul Guschelbauer is also hoping to make goal, but the odds are against him. Like every athlete still in the race, he's fighting to the end and determined to rein in Manuel Nubel, who's made an incredible comeback from 16th place to 6th place. He's pulled a night pass and is going all out to the very end. The end, however, has come for Francis Theo de Blick, who was eliminated as the last-placed yeah, athlete yeah, sure. on the second-to-last day. Excel was a very, very big challenge. For sure, it was really difficult and really tough. Uh, it was one of the biggest challenges I, I had in life, for sure. Switzerland's Jael Margalish counts the final seconds before the race officially comes to an end. I feel great. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have lost uh, 12 days like this and uh, to be still fit. Uh, yeah. You, um, at the beginning, you don't know if you can do it, and in the end, I could achieve this. So I'm really happy and getting maybe. <laughs> After 12 days of racing, it's time for prize giving and the party. Gavin McClurg wins the Saliva Trophy for sportsmanship and Krieg Mara takes the crown another time. So at the end of the race, the standings look like this. Krieg Mara takes the win, Patrick von Kernel comes second, and Simon Oberauner is third, with both Maxime Pinot and Benoit Uter reaching goal. But for every athlete, whatever the ranking, it's been an amazing adventure. The Red Bull X Alps will return. We'll see you again in 2023.